Edmund Spencer, The Fairy Queen Edmund Spencer's epic poem, The Fairy Queen, is a classic of Elizabethan-era literature. Told in six sections, or books, it's a window into the lost world of chivalry, courtship, quests, and intrigue. In this blink, you'll meet the likes of Red Cross, who's struggling to live up to his sacred purpose as the Knight of Holiness. Guyon, the Knight of Temperance, who must resist temptation and passion, and steadfast Britomart, the woman knight, who wears her chastity as armour on her bold quest for love and glory. Facing tests of character and conflicts both violent and subtle, the champion's quest toward the court of the Fairy Queen is a magnificent tapestry of allegory and myth, which will decode with short analyses to deepen your understanding of the story. Book 1 Our tale begins with the Knight Red Cross, a hero representing holiness, who's on a quest to defeat a deadly dragon. He's joined by his servant and Una, the princess of the kingdom threatened by the dragon. A violent storm throws them off course and into the path of the monster Error, depicted as a half-serpent, half-woman beast. After an intense battle, Red Cross slays Error, his first test in demonstrating spiritual strength and virtue. Shortly after, the trio meet the deceiving wizard Archimago, who tricks Red Cross into believing Una is unchaste, causing the knight to abandon her. Red Cross later joins forces with the seemingly virtuous Lady Fidessa, who is actually Duessa, a deceitful sorceress representing falsehood. Duessa delivers Red Cross to the House of Pride, ruled by the arrogant Queen Lucifera. There, Red Cross battles the villain Sansjoy, wounding him. Duessa then aids Sansjoy's healing, showing where her true alliances lie. Red Cross's servant warns his master that they must flee the House of Pride without Duessa, lest he fall captive through spiritual weakness. But Red Cross is soon seduced by Duessa again and captured by the monstrous giant Orgoglio. Meanwhile, Una searches for her lost knight. After fending off an assault from the villain Sansloy, she is taken prisoner by a group of satyrs until a young, half-human knight named Satyrane rescues her. Freed, Una secures help from Prince Arthur in rescuing her beloved knight from Orgoglio's dungeon. Revived and renewed in faith, Red Cross travels to the House of Holiness, where healing and spiritual nourishment finally prepare him for victory against evil. Spiritually strengthened, Red Cross heads home to battle the lethal dragon that's been laying waste to Una's parents' kingdom. Though the struggle spans three days and brings Red Cross to death's door multiple times, he eventually slays the beast. Triumphant at last, Red Cross has proven himself worthy of Una's hand in marriage. The Fairy Queen is a celebrated example of allegory, a narrative technique where characters and events symbolize abstract concepts conveying deeper meanings or moral lessons through storytelling. In the poem, each knight personifies a cardinal value that's tested through idealized quests. Each one also serves as a surrogate for a historical Tudor figure. Red Cross, as we've seen, represents holiness and is a stand-in for St. George and the Anglican Church. Spencer also designed shadowy villains like Archimago and Duessa to symbolize papism and false religion, and the Catholic threat to English Protestantism. Book 2 The second book of The Fairy Queen chronicles the adventures of Sir Guyon, the Knight of Temperance, as he journeys to defeat the enchantress Acrasia in her Bower of Bliss. Guyon must overcome numerous threats and diversions that test his commitment to moderation, prudence, and self-control. He is accompanied by a holy palmer, or pilgrim, 
whose wisdom and guidance steer Guyon back on course when he strays too close to intemperance. Archimago has escaped the captivity he earned for deceiving Red Cross, and now tricks Guyon and the Palmer by disguising himself as an injured man whose wife has been assaulted. Guyon and the Palmer assist Archimago in searching for the alleged culprit, who turns out to be Red Cross. Guyon is nearly influenced into attacking Red Cross, but Archimago's lies are uncovered just in time. During their travels, Guyon is also tested by the alluring Lady Phaedria. She transports him across water to her land of idleness, where she tries to lull him into slothful repose. Later, in a crucial underworld quest, Guyon withstands the temptations of Mammon, a miserly character representing ambition and greed. As his quest proceeds, he becomes better at rejecting the enticements of excess and idleness. Guyon continues to face grave battles and dangers before reaching the Bower of Bliss, such as when the wrathful knights Pyrocles and Simocles, together with Archimago, find Guyon unconscious and attack him. Luckily, Prince Arthur intervenes, allowing Guyon to press forward on his mission. Guyon's temperance and virtue enable him to finally capture Acrasia and destroy her beguiling let perilous bower, defeating lust and violence in the process. Temperance is a recurring theme in the Fairy Queen, symbolizing self-control, moderation, and the virtuous balance of one's desires. Throughout the epic, characters such as Sir Guyon embody the virtue of temperance. As they navigate various challenges and temptations, they show the importance of restraint and discipline in the face of worldly pleasures and excesses. Aligning with the broader allegorical structure of the poem, Spencer uses these characterizations to convey a moral lesson. Temperance is essential for achieving spiritual and moral harmony. Book 3 Book 3 celebrates the virtue of chastity, embodied in the woman warrior Britomart. We first meet Britomart as she unhorses Guyon in a friendly joust. She aids Red Cross in a fight against six knights, who attack him outside the wanton Malacasta's castle Joyous. Her true quest, though, is for her destined love, the knight Arthagal. When Britomart was first smitten by Arthurgal's image in an enchanted looking-glass, she sought the wizard Merlin's help. Merlin revealed that she and Arthurgal would continue the line leading to Queen Elizabeth. The untempered passions of others often imperil Britomart's safety during her adventures, but Britomart prevails every time. There's the wrathful Marinel who Britomart slays when he arrogantly bars her way. Like Guyon before her, she also faces the malevolent sorceress Arcrasia. Britomart overcomes Arcrasia's temptations and ultimately defeats her. Later, she encounters Lady Amorette, the lover of Scudamore. Amorette is being held captive by a monster named Busirain who's attempting to force Amoret into an unholy marriage. Britomart defeats Busserain and rescues Amoret, cementing her reputation as a valiant champion of chastity. Spencer's epic contains a spectrum of female characters that illuminate conflicting Renaissance views of women's natures. On one side are figures like Una and the Fairy Queen herself, each embodying a cardinal virtue and strength of mind, or even physical prowess, beyond most men. Along with Britomart and Amoret, Book 3 also introduces Florimel, whose beauty and allure drive many knights to seek her. Her character serves as a symbol of idealized beauty and virtue, leading to various quests and adventures in the epic poem. But set against these paragons are women like Duessa, Lucifera, and Acrasia, who represent moral corruption, 
using their shadowy arts and sexual beauty to misdirect and entrap men. This dichotomy between virtue and villainy reveals tensions within Spencer's age about female power. Women were either seen as helpmates, inspiration, and mothers of future heroes, or as dangerous temptresses luring men to sin and ruin. Book 4 Following Britomart after she's rescued Amaret from the enchanter Busirain, Book 4 intertwines several plots concerning the virtue of friendship and the paradoxes of love. Believing Britomart is a noble and male knight, Amaret joins her on the next leg of her adventures. Their bond embodies virtuous friendship, a sharp contrast to the manipulative seduction seen elsewhere in the poem. They seek shelter at a castle where knights must have a lady to stay the night. Britomart is challenged by a knight and defeats him, claiming Amaret as her own. We then encounter the knights Paradel and Blandamore, who were trying to rescue Florimel from Pharaoh, the villain who's holding her captive. Neither knight knows, however, that this is a false Florimel, crafted in Florimel's image by the witch Duessa. Blandamore defeats Pharaoh and takes the false Florimel. As a result, Paradel becomes jealous. Eventually, Paradel and Blandamore arrive at a tournament where they participate in jousts and competitions. The false Florimel, who is still with them, becomes the subject of contention among the knights. They argue over who has the right to claim her as their lady. The tournament also includes a beauty contest. The fairest lady of all shall receive a prize. The false Florimel, in hope of winning, tries on a magical girdle that once belonged to Venus. But it falls off because she lacks chastity, revealing her true nature. Britomart, who has won the tournament, is awarded the false Florimel but refuses to accept her as a prize. Meanwhile, a love story unfolds between the virtuous female warrior Belphoebe and the knight Timius. Initially, Belphoebe misunderstands Timius and gets angry at him. However, when she later finds him in a weakened state and nurses him back to health, her feelings toward him change. Timius, who has been suffering due to his unrequited love for Belphoebe, is overjoyed by her kindness. Their relationship evolves from misunderstanding to mutual affection, illustrating the theme of love's transformative power. Love is a multifaceted theme in The Fairy Queen, playing a fundamental role in the moral and spiritual development of the characters in Spencer's poem. Throughout the epic, love takes on various forms and serves as a driving force. Romantic love, exemplified in the relationships between characters like Red Cross and Una, Britomart and Arthurgal, and Belphoebe and Timius, showcases the power of love to inspire and guide noble deeds. But love isn't limited to romantic contexts. It also encompasses divine love, the love of country, and the love of virtue. These different forms of love motivate the knights and characters in their quests and adventures. Book 5 In Book 5 of The Fairy Queen, the noble knight Arthurgal, under the guidance of his trusty companion Talus, embarks on a chivalrous quest to champion justice and right wrongs. His journey unfolds through a series of remarkable events and encounters. Notably, Arthurgal exposes a treacherous knight who beheaded a lady, unveiling the truth and restoring justice. As the narrative progresses, Arthurgal and Talus face new challenges, including the defeat of the Sarazin guardian Polente, who guarded a vital bridge. This victory results in the reformation of the customs surrounding the bridge, emphasizing the importance of maintaining order and fairness. 
They also confront a giant who seeks to redistribute wealth and resources equally. Arthagol demonstrates the divine balance in nature, thwarting the giant's misguided ambitions. Throughout their adventures, Arthagol's unwavering commitment to justice remains evident. He resolves disputes over land and treasure, ensuring fair and equitable resolutions. Additionally, the friends encounter Turpine, a captive held by the fierce Amazon warrior Radigund. Arthagol pledges to aid him, setting the stage for future confrontations and battles. The poem takes an intriguing turn as Arthagol engages in a fierce battle with Radigund, who captures Turpine. Despite Radigund's viciousness, Arthagol shows mercy toward her due to her beauty. Of course, this complicates the situation, leading to unexpected romantic entanglements involving the trusty maid Clorinda. These intricate relationships and the complexities of love add depth to the storyline as Arthagol continues his noble quest for justice. Arthurian legend plays a significant role in the Fairy Queen. Arthagol, for instance, illustrates the chivalric ideals associated with King Arthur and his fabled knights. Like Arthur, Arthagol is defined by justice, righteousness, and the pursuit of noble quests. And the portrayal of Arthagol's companions, such as Talus, reflects the camaraderie and loyalty characteristic of Arthur's knights. Moreover, King Arthur himself is a central figure throughout the poem symbolizing the ideal Christian monarch and the embodiment of chivalry. His court at the mythical Camelot represents a utopian vision of a just and harmonious society. By incorporating these elements into the Fairy Queen, Spencer draws on the rich tradition of Arthurian romance to convey his own ideas about virtue, heroism, and the optimal ruler while also paying homage to the enduring appeal of the Arthurian legend in English literature. Book 6 In Book 6 of The Fairy Queen, the enchanting realm of fairyland takes center stage, where courtesy is celebrated as the most esteemed virtue. The story follows the valiant knight Calidor, whose noble quest is to subdue the fearsome, blatant beast a powerful symbol of slander and calumny that wreaks havoc in the land. As Calidor embarks on his mission, he encounters various characters who play essential roles in his journey. Notably, he meets Tristram, a prince who has been exiled due to the wicked actions of his uncle. This encounter sparks a chain of events where Calidor's chivalry and courage shine brightly. Further along the path, Calidor comes across Pastorella, a lovely shepherdess who captures his heart. His courtly manners and unwavering valour are on full display as he seeks to win her affection, even facing a rival suitor, Corridon, in a contest for her love. While Calidor's focus is primarily on the blatant beast, the narrative also takes detours to explore other tales including the adventures of Serena and Timius, as they confront the same menacing creature, aided by a salvage man and the heroic Arthur. Calidor's quest leads to encounters with lawless groups, including the brigands who abduct shepherds and shepherdesses. His unwavering determination and courage enable him to defeat those foes and reunite Pastorella with her family. The poem takes a surprising turn when Pastorella's true parentage is revealed, leading to a joyful family reunion. However, Calidor remains steadfast in his pursuit of the blatant beast, which continues its destructive path through the world, affecting both the innocent and the guilty. Chivalry is a prominent and recurring theme in The Fairy Queen. The poem is set in a world deeply rooted in the chivalric code, 
where knights are expected to uphold a strict moral and ethical framework that includes qualities such as courage, honor, loyalty, and courtesy. The chivalry of characters like Calidor not only guides their actions, but also serves as a moral compass in their encounters with adversaries and challenges. Thus, Spencer highlights chivalry's importance in the development of noble and virtuous individuals, emphasizing that the true hero is one who adheres to the chivalric code, strives to protect the weak, and defends righteousness in a world filled with moral complexities and temptations.